people say South Africa's unemployment rate, which is at an eight-year high, calls for innovative solutions. Some say social entrepreneurship, which is fast gaining traction in South Africa, is an option. These are individuals who run social enterprises that do not rely on grant funding but generate income internally to survive in the long term. Karin Grich is a specialist in social and environmental enterprise and heads up the Network for Social Entrepreneurs at Gordon Institute for Business Science. In a recently published book, The Disruptors, she's documented inspiring tales of hardworking South Africans who are generating income for themselves while building up social enterprises. She's here with me in studio. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us, Karin. Thank you. Now, the Disruptors. We were just having a chat before going on air. What a title. Just explain it to me and, and, and break it down how you came to that title. We brainstormed a lot of different titles to really capture what social entrepreneurship is in South Africa. And our first title was quite dull. It was South Africa's Social Entrepreneurs, but it really didn't catch the fizz and the energy of what social enterprise and entrepreneurs are in, are in the country. And we came across the title Disruptors because that's exactly what they are. They're looking at our world differently. They they trying to see how they can fix or change or progress our society and they're disrupting the norm and it's all about positive disruption what can you do differently to make things better and so the title the disruptors came to us quite quickly and i think it's stuck now social entrepreneurship what is it really can you break it down for us and and sort of um we, we were chatting the fact that this has possibly been around for generations mm. to come now what is it and and what's the reception been like so there's no real definition for what social entrepreneurship is. It's a very big, broad, fuzzy space. We kind of know what it looks like in the UK and the US. And this was one of the motivations for the book, is to get a sense as to, well, what does it look like in South Africa? It started off by when I was trying to explain what I do at Gibbs, people would start looking at me funny and, and walking quite quickly out of the conversation. And so the book is really to give us a start point to understand what social entrepreneurs or who social entrepreneurs are and what are their social enterprises. So these are organizations that see opportunity in their society. So they see social mission first, what can I do to progress my society? But instead of this being a charity, which is what we would commonly perceive that to be, these are people who look at, well, how do I generate a profit from that service? So the best way to look at this is what we see in the revolution in low fee schools, where you've got people really doing a lot to to reinvent the education system so that we can offer quality education that is affordable. And folk like Teddy Bletcher with Maharishi Institute and Stacey Brewer with Spark Schools are great examples of what social entrepreneurs and social enterprises look like. Now, let's just backtrack. What exactly is your title? <laughs> <laughs> you just brought something out that people probably don't understand. What exactly is your title and what do you do? So I head up the Network for Social Entrepreneurs at Gibbs. We were actually a unit that was started by Jill Marcus in 2003 and really visionary in looking at what this blended space is between business and charity. So we know that there's a massive disconnect in the country and we're experiencing it through the distrust um, and the unrest that we see that comes onto our, our screens almost daily these days. There's things we haven't developed our society and our economy at the same time. And what social enterprise does is it takes the best of business, so the profit motive, the accountability and governance, which we know we will class in, and it connects those to the social values and the, the societal connect that ch we typically associate with charity. So social enterprise really sits in the middle of the spectrum between for-profit and not-for-profit, and it holds this very beautiful space. Now, social entrepreneurship, environmental entrepreneurship. What's the difference and how do they work hand in hand? <laughs> Same different and both. So the, we, you know, there's a new phrase that's emerging, which is really impact entrepreneurs or so, social impact entrepreneurs. So it can be environmental and social. Um, the word social is very broad and we would consider that to include environmental. But really it's what can you do that brings value to your society as a primary goal and generates an income to sustain that goal so that it can grow. So it, can, it does this lovely connection between impact and income. And instead of having to rely on grant funding, which means that charities often aren't sustainable, mm 
By bringing a profit motive into the social or environmental goal, you are able to see organizations grow because people recognize and value the service that they provide. Now, let's speak about some of the subjects you brought to life in the book. Do you know, what are the, uh, in terms of the differences, what do you think is their driving force, apart from um, sort of giving back to their communities or people around them? You know, it, 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 it sort of borders on, uh, apart from patriotism, in a sense, you know, it's not about profit for them. It's just about ensuring that the communities around them are developing and, and growing in a, in a good direction, I guess. I think these are folk who've got a very strong sense of crazy. They're not normal. Um, they are not folk who grow up and go, I just want to earn money and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. They really recognize that, to, that value is more than money mm -hmm. and that and that's what they're driven by. And, and they come from very different backgrounds. So someone like Yusuf Randira Rees, who is a Harvard and a Oxford grad, is back in South Africa and set up a way to, which is a very well-known social enterprise. Mm -hmm. We've got Dr. Kovan Naidu, who runs the Brian Holden Institute as an example, which is a multi, multi-million dollar um, enterprise that exists to provide accessible, affordable eye health care. That is its primary mission, and it works across the globe. And it is funded, what funds its work through contact lens technology. They essentially do R&D. So you see people who've got a deep sense of commitment to, uh, to progressing society and the communities within which they work, and they find a profit source of funding that is outside of grant funding to make it work. Now, Karen, sorry, just to come in there. You know, you, you speak of uh, people who have gone through to Harvard, Yusu, for instance, and uh, where to and so on. Let's speak about how they got to that point where they made a conscious decision to say, this is now time for me to give back. You know, because you spent time with them, you had discussions, you had chats, and they sort of took you, th took you through their thought process and how they came to being in the positions that they're in today. They all have a very strong connectivity to their communities and the world around them. So they don't operate in a bubble. But there is definitely that element of crazy that mm. they see the world in a very, very different way. And, and they have a very strong resilience. So, you know, just like I got fed up with people kind of distancing themselves from me when I tried to explain what they do, it's much harder for our social entrepreneurs because mm. people will be going, but what do you mean you don't want to earn profits as your primary motive? What do you mean you don't want to have a helicopter by the age of 30? Um, these are people who operate on the frontiers. I start calling them our super entrepreneurs because they operate in environments of deep constraint and they make it work. And as our economy gets more difficult for business to thrive in, I do believe it's our social entrepreneurs who hold a very secret key to how entrepreneurship can thrive in South Africa. Just speaking of that, and the reception from um, the industry or from the country, um, you know, as you say, you, you refer to them as uh, slightly crazy or slightly yes. a bit offish. What's the reception been like, apart from them having difficulty in explaining why they're in the space that they're in and how they got to being there and getting people to understand what it really means to them and why they do it? So the reception's been wonderful to the book. We've already had to order a reprint from our first print run, which is exciting because with a book like this, with a topic that is not a mainstream topic, you never quite know how it's going to land. And I think that really indicates so much about where we are as a country, where we're recognizing that we have to bring, we, we've got to bring our society along. We can't just focus on economic development. And we see this in a wonderful report called the, called the Global Competitiveness Index, which shows us that South Africa scores first in the world in a lot of our financial institutions, our governance, our support for minority shareholders, our access to equity markets, but in our social development indicators, we know education, health, labor relations, we score very poorly. And we cannot continue to grow our country focusing on just one pillar of our, of our society. And so we have to bring society and economy together, and our social entrepreneurs do that very, very well. And they operate on that frontier. They somehow know how to instinctively connect economics and society. Yeah. Just speaking of uh, the economic focus of uh, government and, and business and profit, you know, building on that strength and where there's uh, a lack of the social element, which is health, education, mm -hmm. um, just to mention a few, that uh, bridge between, we, we had a chat that it sort of falls, social entrepreneurship or environmental entrepreneurship falls between different government departments mm. and uh, the reception thereof. After sp have you managed to speak to any of the, the 
organizations apart from the IDC who sort of have a department where they focus yeah. on that. What is government's reception of all the different departments? We spoke of um, the small business development uh, department, yeah. uh, is it uh, trade and industry? Yeah. So there's all that element. Where do you come in and how would you be able to bring everyone together to say, listen, we've got the disruptors. Is there a way of sort of bringing it out there and working towards achieving just as great on the social element, which is education, health, as much as on the economic mm. side, which is, brings it into balance? It's such a lovely question because government is very receptive. So the IDC has got a social enterprise fund, which is a, is a wonderful pot to support these kind of organizations. The book itself is funded through National Treasury, so you see a great reception from them. The the difficulty is that it's, you know, government's role is to create an enabling environment for social enterprise, but how can you enable something that we don't really know what it is? And so this was very much the start point for the book, is so that we can start looking to influence policy that can create um, an environment in South Africa which allows both for-profit and not-for-profit organizations to be funded and to exist. So technically in South Africa we just have for-profit and not-for-profit legal structures. We're asking for something in the middle and there's lovely work that's happening within the government spheres to try and encourage that and that was one of the big motivations behind publishing the book. Now very quickly we've run out of time. Where do people get access to the book? So there's ebook online through Amazon, loot.co.za, um, also through your bookshop, CNA Exclusive Books. It's, it's available pretty much across the country. Um, and please enjoy reading it. It's, we enjoyed writing it. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. I wish we could go on and on. It's a very interesting <laughs> topic. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, that was Karin Kricher, a specialist in social and environmental enterprise and heads up the network for social entrepreneurs at the Gordon Institute for Business.